Hi everybody, I hope y'all are doing well. So today I'm going to be doing my third wrap up for the year. I have so far for the year read 15 books. I'm doing so well. Sarcasm. Especially given the fact that I have, you know, I have like 15 more books to read to reach my Goodreads goal. And we only have three and a half months for the rest of the year. Yeah. Anyway, so the first book I want to talk about is a non-fiction book that I listened to on audio, which is In the Country We Love by Diane Guerrero. You might recognize Guerrero from her roles in Orange is the New Black or Jane the Virgin. Her parents came over from Colombia to the United States in the 1980s with her older brother, and then they had her in the States. Unfortunately, they were never able to receive their documentation, um, no matter how hard they tried. So when Guerrero was 14 years old, her entire family was deported back to Colombia. So this memoir, I would say, is separated into two parts. The first half is definitely life growing up with undocumented parents and what that is like and it also sort of served to establish the kind of relationship she had with her parents, her brother and the people in her life. The second half of the memoir is obviously after her parents were deported and how she had to kind of fend for herself, how she had to depend on the mercies of um, this woman is standing at her window looking directly at me. Do I look like a TV screen? The second half of the memoir followed her life as she had to fend for herself, as she had to live off the mercy of family friends, and as she went through college and got a boyfriend and did all of that stuff. I was also surprised to see how in-depth she went with her experience with depression and suicidal thoughts and self-harm, which obviously if you are affected by those things, I would consider that before going into this book. But this is a very important book because it's one of those narratives that really does humanize the experience of immigration. And when I say that, I, I feel like when I look at like US politics and news and all of that stuff, people talk about immigration from this very bird's eye point of view, just like the way they talk about the weather and they kind of forget like these are people with actual feelings who just want better lives in most cases. So, you know, it, it the story really does serve to humanize that. And it's also a scary story in the sense that, you know, Guerrero turned out fine in the end. I mean, yes, her parents are still in Colombia, but they're not living completely dire lives, at least as far as the book tells you. And, you know, she's an actress now. She's making a name for herself, and things, I would say, are good for her. But, at the same time, you know, there are people who went through a similar circumstance, but they are not in the same position that she is today. So this story is just one of a million stories, and stories that are even more tragic. And, you know, in this world today where, you know, all of these things are happening in the United States with immigration, with all of these discussions about immigration with Donald Trump, Donald fucking Trump. Donald Trump, he looks like a crusty dried up anus of a corpse. I feel like this book is a very important book to read in the climate that we are in today with regards to politics, with regards to race relations, with regards to immigration. And I highly recommend this book. And I also recommend listening to the audiobook. I listened to the audiobook and I was emotionally moved by it because Diane Guerrero herself narrates it. And you know when somebody narrates their own story, that's just it just adds a layer of authenticity that really gets to the reader. My heart broke at the point where she was talking about when her parents were deported and she went to see her mother and her mother was in jail, kind of in transit, I guess you could say, to go back home to Colombia. And that scene was so heartbreaking. You could hear the tension in Guerrero's voice as she was reading it. And I actually cried and I don't cry when I listen to or read books, but I cried. I like legit ugly cried. Like I looked, I look like, I look like that meme of Kim Kardashian, you know, you know that one? Yeah, I look like that. So yes, I gave this book five stars. This is the third book video that I gave five stars to. I highly recommend that you go and read it and listen to it. So the rest of books in this video will be of the young adult variety. And the first one um, is a book that I don't think I need to talk about that much because it has been talked about quite a lot. You may know this book. I feel like you've seen this somewhere before. Uh, this is my first time reading the series, obviously. And this was this is just the perfect ending to a perfect series. I took two and a half years to read it um, deliberately because I wanted to give myself you know, space and time to grow the characters. Um, I didn't want to just binge it all in like a month or something. And I couldn't have done that either way. I would have probably gone mad. I loved it. I love the characters. I love the writing. I love everything about this world. Harry Potter is a very special series to me because I cannot categorize these books with anything else. When I think about my favorite books, obviously this is included, but it's not... It's not there with them at the same time. It's in its own place. It's in its own category. There is nothing on this planet like Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a very unique thing. And I'm not just saying that because of the hype. I'm just I'm saying that because it's true. There's nothing that can come close to this. And say what you want about J.K. Rowling. The woman is brilliant. So I give this four and a half stars. Obviously, I, I don't give every Harry Potter book five stars because it's Harry Potter. I see the flaws in it as well. I give this four and a half stars. And it broke my heart. And it also warmed my heart. And... Now I could finally say that I read the Harry Potter series and I could stop saying, well, oh, I read the first five books and I need to finish the sixth book. I could stop with that shit and said, yes, bitch, I read 
Harry Potter, what's good? Don't have to be avoiding spoilers all the damn time. The next two books are young adult contemporary. The first one is Noteworthy by O'Reilly Redgate. So this one is about a girl called Jordan who is attending a fancy performance high school boarding arts. What? A fancy boarding arts. A fancy... A fancy performing arts boarding high school in New York is what she's attending. So to keep her credentials up, she wants to join this a cappella group called the Sharpshooters, but unfortunately this group is only for boys. So she disguises herself as a boy and joins the group and the entire book is about how she has to sort of balance this double life, balance this secret sort of thing. Um, I would say this book is a combination of Mulan meets Pitch Perfect meets Victorious. Um, if that doesn't, if that doesn't want to make you read this book, I don't know what will. So I'll start off with the things that I liked, which is a lot. This is an excellent book and a very top-notch young adult contemporary novel, if I do say so myself. The writing in here is exquisite. Like, usually with young adult contemporary, it tends to be this very sort of dry, straightforward, angsty type of writing. And I, I usually don't mind that because it, it is a very authentic sort of narrative for a teenager, especially if, from, if, especially if it's from a first person perspective. But with this book, Riley Redgate's writing is very descriptive, it gives you a good feel, it gives you a good atmosphere of the school, of what's going on. You get a very good clear image of the characters and of the surroundings and of just the kind of tones and moods that are woven throughout the story. But at the same time, you don't lose the angst, you don't lose that authentic teenage voice of Jordan. It's still there and I really like that because it's it's not something you see often you know, in young adult contemporary, if you understand what I'm trying to see. The characters in here were also wonderful. They were just amazing. I loved all of them. I loved the interactions between them. I loved the relationships that propped up between them. It was, it was top-notch. Also, the main appealing thing about this book is all of the commentary that we get throughout the story. So obviously, there's a lot of commentary in here about gender because of the whole situation. We have a girl who's disguising herself as a boy and entering a masculine space, a space that she's not supposed to enter. So she's kind of learning things. She's kind of seeing things in a perspective that she never really saw before. There's also a lot of stuff in here about sexuality because the main character, Jordan, is bisexual and she's sort of coming to terms with that and discovering that throughout the story. And also, this has a lot of discussion on class and I, I've never really seen class discussed in young adult contemporary like this before. Jordan is attending the school on scholarship. She's from San Francisco and she's the daughter of Chinese immigrants. Her parents struggle financially. They're very poor. They often live hand to mouth. At some point it was mentioned that they were on food stamps. On top of all of that, her father has various disabilities and medical conditions which incur a lot more costs onto the family. So you see Jordan struggle with that throughout the novel and have to deal with that throughout the novel and I really enjoy that because here she is. She's a poor girl and the daughter of immigrants in a sea of rich white kids and that created a really good discussion. The only thing I did not like about this book was that it made it look very easy for someone to pull off something like what Jordan was doing. We didn't really get to see a lot of her struggle in dressing up as a guy and and like going to class as herself. Like the entire book focused on her as a guy with these other boys and it didn't, we didn't see enough of her in class as herself and all of that. We just saw her with the boys. I just felt like the whole dressing up as a boy thing wasn't handled as realistically as I would have wanted it to be handled. But it's still a good book. It's absolutely important. I absolutely recommend it. I give it four stars and you should definitely read it. I look forward to reading more from Redgate in the future. So the next book that I read was Saints and Misfits by S.K. Ali and I'll be very concise with this because I did a full review for it and I highly recommend that you go and watch that review because I spelled all of my thoughts on this book very coherently, if you will, in that video. But it's basically a story about a girl called Jana Yusuf. She's a Muslim American girl living in Illinois. And in the beginning of this book, we learn that a very prominent member of the Islamic community there who is around Jana's age sexually assaults her. She decides to keep this a secret because she assumes that if she tells everybody, they wouldn't believe her. So the entire book is about how she sort of has to deal with this internal struggle while balancing out her everyday life. She has a crush on another guy, you know, she has a bunch of family issues, she has a bunch of friendship sort of things going on, and I really loved this book. I was impressed with the way that SK Ali was able to have all of these different characters in this story and yet not make them seem um, two-dimensional because there was so much characters. I love the Islamic representation, the things that Jordan had to say about her religion and how certain things affected her. I love the whole underlying discussion about how we have this this sort of thing in a lot of Islamic communities and religious communities and just communities in general where we revere certain individuals and we just view them for what they present themselves as when in reality they could be the most disgusting scum and you wouldn't even know. 
as I went through in my review, I did have a couple issues with this book. I didn't particularly care for the writing, um, and I felt like the book should have been a bit longer so that we could have had more time with all of these different characters, as well as um, more time to wrap up the ending in a way that didn't seem rushed. But it's still a wonderful book. I gave it four stars, and again, I highly recommend that you go and check out my review. And the final book I have to talk about, Ripped My Soul Out because it was just that good. And it is a book that has been receiving so much hype lately and you will not be shocked to know that it's The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. So this one is a young adult historical fiction novel that has a slight element of fantasy to it. In it we are following this boy called Henry Montague who is the son of a very rich guy in England. And back in the 1700s when boys finished finishing school they would have to go on a European tour just to kind of learn culture and to get all of the partying and drinking and sex capades out of their system before they come back home and become like prominent members of society. So Henry is going on one of these tours and accompanying him is his best friend Percy who he is also in love with as well as his sister Felicity. But while they're on this tour things go awry <laughs> to say the least and after a couple detours they have to end up on this quest to return a certain item to a certain person thing so that you, when you read it you'll understand so the writing in here is absolutely wonderful i feel like mackenzie lee did an excellent job at capturing the voice of an 18 year old boy in that time period the characters were absolutely amazing and we had a lot of commentary with regards to identity with regards to politics because obviously percy is bisexual and he is in love with his friend who is a boy and who is also biracial because he's half black half white right there we get a lot of commentary throughout the story about what the experience of a biracial boy back in those days would have been like especially going on tour seeing all of these different people and Percy also has epilepsy and Monty wants to cure him but he has to sort of come to terms with his ableism throughout the story which is something that I really enjoyed and that was also a really main thing about this book him coming to terms with his privilege because even though yes he's bisexual he's still a rich white guy you know and his sister is a very feminist person and she wants to become a doctor but obviously she can't because there were no facilities back in those days to help women become doctors in most cases so there's a lot of commentary in here about racism sexism ableism and it was woven into the story most brilliantly because you know when it comes to adventure stories when it comes to these trophy sorts of novels you don't expect th those kinds of things but that's what this book is meant to do it's meant to add that very necessary layer to this sort of genre and it was so refreshing and so wonderful. As for the plot, I actually really enjoyed the plot. I was sucked into it. I was enjoying every minute of it. But it's not that detailed. It's not that realistic. The author wrote this with the intention of it being a very tropey adventure novel with pirates and highwaymen and, and detours and all of these sorts of things. And she did it really well. This is a book that I wouldn't say to judge it too much by the plot. If you go into this book expecting like a European plot tour and that's the main thing you're looking forward to you might be a bit disappointed but I don't really care about it because this is really the story of these three characters and how they grew and how they learned from each other over this very difficult period of time I gave it five stars it's the fourth book for the year that I gave five stars and that also says something so you need to read this book and fix your life I absolutely adored it and I could tell that this could be either my favorite or one of my favorite books for the year. And yes, that is everything I have for you all today. Um, in the comments down below, I'd love to know if you have any thoughts on any of these books, if you've read them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. And until next time, inshallah, keep reading.